Hi, Dan Radio Style. Hope everybody out there is having a great day. Anxiety and how to remove it. It's going to be a little different than maybe a lot of you guys are thinking about. I'm not coming up with a, a, a technique to remove anxiety. I'm not coming up with some sort of special uh, thing you need to do in order to remove anxiety, uh, per se. But as I frequently talk about a lot and believe very strongly in, dealing with anxiety is like dealing with the wound that keeps festering. You just keep putting a band-aid on it by dealing with the anxiety, by saying, oh, I'm not anxiety, I've got affirmations I can say, and da 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 and I get myself going off into a good direction again. Woo! Ha, oh, thank goodness, until it happens again, and again, and again. Again, we're not dealing with the problem. What is the problem? What is the root of anxiety? Now, I think, this is, I don't know, this is kind of been thinking about it a lot, and what I've kind of come to is I think it really has a lot to do with us questioning if it works, if law of attraction works, if the stuff I'm doing works. Because we see things happen, and we're like, oh, goody, I think this works. And then we get closer and closer, but some time has passed. Now we're not necessarily seeing stuff as much. And we start to wonder, oh no, does this happen? Oh no, does this work? Am I crazy? Is this all coincidence? I get that. I get that. And I think one of the things to remember, first and foremost, law of attraction is on 100 point zero percent of the time. 100.0. 100%. I'm not rounding up. It's 100% of the time, law of attraction is not only working, but is flipped on. Like from the minute you're born, pretty much, until you're older. Now, there's rules to how this uh, happens, and, and there is a progression that we do to ourselves, more as a trying to get ourselves up to speed, if you will, right? Like you don't expect someone on their first day of the job to be sufficient on the job, but a year down the road, you're going to hold them accountable at a different level, right? It's the same thing with law of attraction. You know, you're into it for a year. You're going to get held to a higher, uh, a higher accord than when you first started. So some of the things that people question, one, is this technique I'm using correct? Is this technique I'm using correct? Should I try this instead? Well, so-and-so said this. I don't know, 55 times five or cups or, or spades or, ah, what do I do? It's too many choices. It's always on, and it doesn't matter what choice you make. It's always on. What these things, these techniques are meant to do is to get you consciously focusing. That's it. That's it. It's to get you to consciously focus. When you consciously focus, you're choosing consciously what you're experiencing. Many of us, for a long period of time prior to LOA for sure, we're unconsciously living. We just reacted. We uh, dealt with things as they happened. We thought we were just bystanders in it all. We'd react frequently most of the time. And when you react to something that you created, right? Think about it. If something happens to you and it's us or us pushed out or whatever, right? And you react to it. Now you're reacting to yourself, to what you sent out. You react and create more of it. So law of attraction always works, and the techniques all at one, they force you consciously to use your focus. That's it, your focus. Your focus of feelings, your focus of thoughts, and your focus of words, and your focus of deeds. Your focus. And whatever one's comfortable for you is the one you should use. That's, that's it. Done. Okay, so let's pull that out of the equation for a moment. It's not the technique you're using. I promise you, the technique you're doing, you are doing it fine. You're doing it perfectly. I guarantee you that. So remove that from the equation. That is not what is causing your anxiety. I promise you. I'm sorry. I don't sell books, so I guess this doesn't, you know, I'm not trying to defeat myself in any way, shape, or form. So I don't know. Maybe, maybe this could be bad to some people that have a new book and a new technique that comes out weekly. I, you know, I'm just saying. It doesn't matter. Whatever is comfortable for you and it's getting you to consciously focus, perfect. Amen. Game on. You win. Another thing that I think a lot of us do is we listen to other success stories. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with this. I'm just saying when someone else says they were successful at something, there's a lot of things at work there. 
right? Their level of belief, their level of practicing, uh, all of the confidence. Uh, maybe this thing was a little easier already than your particular situation, meaning like they already knew each other and they were already went on a first date. Now I'm just trying to manifest it to the next step. Well, that's kind of different than I haven't even talked to them yet, right? I mean, in belief, yes. In reality, not really, but I mean, it is. And again, that's the, the beliefs we impart on ourselves, but I get that from the standpoint of the things that mechanically need to happen or need to evolve or need to come into physicality. There's a number of things that need to happen if you haven't spoken to them versus you've already been on a first date. A huge number of steps have already occurred, right? So again, listening to other success stories is one, like the uh, instant media or the, the social media world that we live in. No one's talking about all the failures. Now, people don't go like uh, 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 Edison, right? The fact that he had like 10,000 different ways that he tried to make the light bulb and he failed 9,999 times before he finally came out with the proper filament that made the original light bulb. They don't talk about the fact, well, they kind of do now, but they don't, they didn't then talk about the fact that he, dude, he failed 9,999 times. He failed. Failed. But really, he just needed to find the one way to make it work. So the one thing is what they're going to talk about when they give their success stories. Not a lot of the struggles and bumps and bruises along the way. Most of us I don't know. We, we, some do. I mean, there's plenty that do. Don't get me wrong. But most people are putting out their success stories and they don't talk about the fact that they still have anxiety. They still have issues. They still get in fights from time to time. There's still problems in the relationship from time to time. They don't talk about that. But they just tell you, yeah, no, I did this. And then I wrote it on the side. And then I bounced on one leg and I held up one arm and I went, I, I, oh, I, I, like that. And I did that. And then bam. It manifested itself. And by the way, that's the I, I, oh, I, I technique. And uh, I'll do another video on that. It's a very powerful technique. So again, the success stories is not, of others anyways, is not what matters. Your success story is what matters. That's really where the crux of anxiety starts to come into play. The crux of anxiety comes into play because... We keep comparing ourselves or we keep acknowledging the fact that what we're seeking isn't physically here yet. Physically here yet. And we understand intellectually that if it's in our minds, it's real. Even though we don't, most of us don't know what that really means. And I'll, a quick explanation, at least how I understand it. Now, this isn't necessarily going to help you, but this is my understanding of it, is when you think of it, it's in a higher dimensional form. You've created it. In reality, it's in reality, in a higher dimension. There's some version of yourself that's basically holding, you were thinking of a bowling ball. Now, all of a sudden, you're holding a bowling ball in a higher dimension. You're like, okay, there's the bowling ball. And so what it is, is it's trying to get more and more dense, more and more physical, more and more into the, you know, it goes from 6D down to 5D, down to 4D, down to 3D. That takes time. That's all. Because Three dimension is time and space. That is what it is. That's what we got into. Up above that, things just are, right? I don't quite know what it's like to be in sixth dimension, but that's supposedly where all right. So anyway, don't want to get too off topic, but your success is what matters. So you see the, the coincidences happen because of the technique you chose and you're doing it and things are happening. And then at some point, most of us pay attention to what's going on right now and go, I don't have it right now. And I get nervous, I get anxious, I get worried. Why? What am I not doing? What am I failing to do? Immediately when the anxiety starts, we start to work against ourselves. Immediately. The second anxiety happens, we start to, con we start to contradict and we start to put ourselves into a negative spin. So yes, the fix is to turn yourself back into a positive direction because it's going to happen even when we talk about kind of really what I think is what's going to get us through a lot of this. So when it happens, catch it and just remind yourself why the anxiety is happening and remind yourself that this is something that is happening and I know it works. I've seen it. I've tried it in smaller cases. I've had plenty of experiences uh, that show me that what I focus on seems to come into my reality. Like so often, it's like over 80% of the time, I notice a direct correlation to what I was focusing on and to what I am experiencing. So when you start to get to that place, that 
is when the anxiety can now be dealt with because now you've kind of got a healthy understanding of the law of attraction, of what you are trying to accomplish. Now, there's a phrase in a lot of the English-speaking world, I don't know how far it goes, but I know it exists even across the pond, a watched pot never boils. So a pot of water, right? A watched pot. If I sit there and watch it while, while the heat's on, it never boils. Now, obviously, that's not true, right? You can watch a pot, and it might take 7, 8, 9, 10, 20 minutes. I don't know. Eventually, it will start to boil. I promise you. But as the analogy plays out, we're watching the pot. We're noticing right now it's not boiling. Right? So we check the flame. All right, flame's on. Huh, interesting. Why isn't it not boiling? I know that when I turn fire on, water will boil. All right, shoot. Let me try a different eye. Let me go to a, let me try the back burner. Let me turn that on. Right? There we go. All right, I'll turn off that front burner because that one's obviously not working. All right, fire's on. It, it's not boiling. Why is it not boiling? What? Am I doing something wrong? Is it something with the, the pot? What is going on with the pot? What is, let me turn off the flame again. Let me try it, turn it back on. Maybe that's just not coming on hot enough. Maybe this fire is not fire. It's just like fake fire. So, okay. Uh, all right. It's on again. So that's fire. Ooh, that's, yeah, well, that's hot. Okay. It's still not boiling. What the hell? It's still not boiling. Why is that? I know for sure, for fact, if I put fire under water, it boils. I'm 100% sure of that. In fact, I guarantee it. But it does not do it instantly. Doesn't. What, number of kilocalories is the amount it takes to raise, well, one kilocalorie it takes to raise one gram of water, one degree of Celsius, right? So a lot of, a lot of calories have to be put into that fire to get the hot water boiling sufficiently. And obviously, the more water you have, the longer it takes to boil. It's just it's the way it is. It's the way things work. We can question that process all we want while we're sitting there staring at it, paying attention to the water right now. Yeah, it's not boiling. Mm -mm. Do we question that the fire works? Does the fire work? Is that what I'm asking myself? Does this, maybe I need a different fire. Maybe I need uh, a different type of, maybe I should set it on, uh, ooh, ooh, I have, a, uh, I have one of those heater pads. You know when you get sick and you want to kind of warm yourself up? Maybe a, a heater a blanket, one of those electric blankets? Ooh, maybe if I set it on that, it'll boil quicker, right? Like, ooh, what about, what about that heating element, that camper thingy I have, or that Bunsen burner warmer thingy I have? Let's put it on that, that little hot plate. Does that work better? God, that's not instant either. It's when we question the mechanics that we've already demonstrated, that we already know to be true. That's where the anxiety is. And really, this is where I really think letting go and allowing, those two go hand in hand. Letting go and allowing is really how you get rid of the anxiety. You do the imaginal work. You do the asking. You see it clearly. You understand that that in of itself is the creation. That's it. You can think about it when they pop into your head. A lot of people ask this. Well, if I let go, uh, should I never think of them? No, it's not like that at all. You just don't do the, you don't keep trying to do the imaginal stuff. You just don't, you don't worry. You know what's happening. I've turned the water on. I've set the pot on top of it with, with the fire on underneath. And now I'm going to grab the vegetables and I'm going to start cutting them up. I'm going to focus on something else because I know this pot is going to boil. I know this manifestation is going to happen. And it will pop into my head from time to time. And I'll think about it and be like, dude, I'm so looking forward to when that happens. I'm so looking forward to when the water boils. I'm so looking forward to seeing so-and-so. I'm so looking forward to going out with him. I'm so looking forward to our first kiss. It's going to be awesome. And then I go back to cutting vegetables. It's okay to think about them. I don't get upset. About it. It's awesome. It's great. But I'm not every night before I go to bed imagining kissing them. I don't need to. I'm going to kiss them. I know I will. That water's heating up. 
It's happening. And I do think of them from time to time. And as I've said in other videos, I think of other scenarios going out on that first date. I wonder what we're going to do on that first date. I think it'd be fun to go down to uh, this little local restaurant down, to, down the street. They've got a nice array of different beers and stuff like that. And take her there and they got great food. That'd be awesome. We'll go there. Right? You start just expanding on where this is going to go. You explore other territory once you're in the end. That's living in the end, by the way. So they pop into my head. I'm like, oh, totally. Yeah, I can see us driving around. Maybe we'll do that trip up, uh, up the coast highway. You can see the beaches and stuff. It's just beautiful, right? That's thinking about other things that you're going to do with them. And then I go back to chopping vegetables because there's other stuff going on in our world. The pot's boiling or it's working on it. I'm chopping vegetables. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not worried about it. I'm not anxious in any way, shape, or form. I think, ooh, is the water going to boil? Eh, I'm still chopping vegetables. Look over. Eh, it's not boiling yet. It's cool. All right, keep chop, 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 choppy. Then all of a sudden, I got all my veggies ready, and I'm looking over there, and shoot, there it is. Water's boiling. Awesome. Cool. It happened when I wasn't paying attention to it. That's where the anxiety comes from. It's from that lack of belief first. And if we've got that ironed out, if you're at a place where you're like, no, I totally believe in law of attraction, then the other side of it's you keep noticing it's not boiling right now. You keep paying attention to right now, thinking that's actually tomorrow. Right now is not tomorrow. Right now is nothing like tomorrow. It might be similar, maybe. But right now is not tomorrow. And if your right now is all you keep focusing on, your focus is going to create more of your right now. If you notice right now it's not there, but you're like, ah, it's cool. I'm looking forward to this. It's great. I love them. That's the affirmations kind of kicking in just to get yourself rolling in the right direction again. Really looking forward to them. That first kiss is going to be awesome. Here's where I'm probably going to take them to dinner. Ah, it's going to be cool. Back to chopping vegetables. Let go. Let go. Let go of it. Stop always thinking about it because unless you're 100% focused on where you'd like to go, your thoughts are destroying you and creating what you're anxious about. Think it, focus, make it. And then every time it pops in your head, entertain it for a moment and then go back to chopping your vegetables. You will notice your pot of boiling water is there before you realize it. Get out of your own way. Let go of it. Allow it. If you already believe, let go and allow. If you don't believe yet, I've talked before. Start small. Start small. Parking places, green lights, manifest a beach ball. I've done a lot of stories. Whatever. I manifest small things first. Get comfortable with it. Notice the way. It, yeah, it does seem to work. Well, oh my God, that's so weird. All right, let's try something bigger. Find money. There's a, there are a lot of fun little things you can do to really start to build into this. Once you get past that, let go. Let it happen. Get out of your way. Your anxiety is caused by lack of belief and paying attention to right now, thinking that has anything to do with tomorrow. Same with a lot of people. He's in a relationship right now. So? You're not together right now either. So that's good. At least he's not cheating on you. It's okay. It's all going to work out. It has to. So at some point, they're going to break up. And at some point, you guys are going to get back together. Go back to chopping vegetables. Don't worry about it. Think about him positively. I look forward to being together. I love him. I will be there. Or I love her. We'll be together. It's so awesome. I can't wait. Back to chopping vegetables. By the way, I'm making soup today. Vegetable soup. Huge part of why the whole vegetable analogy came into play. Focus on stuff. Allow it to happen. Have other things going on in your life. Your anxiety will limit so much. Dan Radio style. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Just click the little subscribe button, get the little uh, blings next to the little bell icon, and it'll notify you whenever I put out new videos. Look forward to doing more stuff. If you've got comments, feel free to leave them. And if you've got some show topics, yeah, throw them in the comments. I notice them, and whenever uh, I see show topic ideas, I always write them down. I got a little this little pad of paper. I keep it with me all day long, and anytime things pop up into my head, I write it down, because I'll tell you what, I won't remember it longer than a minute. So, Stan Radio Style, thank you so much for joining me, and we will talk soon. Thanks.